Thanks, Abdath. Uh, hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chinmay Panigrahi. I'm an MBA. And in true MBA style, I'm going to walk through a PowerPoint uh, deck once I'm allowed to share my screen. Yes, Chinmay, you are. But I would request you before you start uh, talking about the slides, uh, I'll take a minute about Oscan because this is a you know, separate recording. Sure. I just want Thanks to touch that. upon Oscan, and I would also request you to talk about you know your journey, you know, MBA and you know, before MBA, MBA, and uh, what you do right now, just for the audience uh, and who will watch this recording later. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, thank you everyone for joining this session. Uh, this is uh, an initiative from uh, Oscan about the uh, higher studies in uh, Netherlands. In this session, we'll talk about uh, MBA in Netherlands. Uh, OSCAN is a voluntary uh, initiative from group of people who are from state of Odisha in India. Uh, usually, the OSCAN community is focused on, uh, of course, celebrating festivals and um, cultural initiatives, but also to create values uh, for ODIs who are in Netherlands and back in India. Uh, to have some educational content or career focused content so that it helps everyone. Um, we invited Chinmay because Chinmay has done MBA here in Netherlands. And after that, he has, uh, he went on to become a successful product manager and have worked in several uh, organizations. I will hand it over to Chinmay. Chinmay, thank you. Uh, yeah, start with, if you can start with your journey so far a couple of minutes sure uh thanks for that um so as 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 Debu mentioned uh i've um uh, i used to work in banking before uh thinking of doing an mba uh i used to work with a company called infosys that a lot of people are familiar with uh i always wanted to do an mba and after a few years working in banking in infosys uh, i thought it was the right time to pursue uh, a different career path um, and explore other opportunities outside of my core uh, career path. So that's kind of how I came uh, about doing an MBA. Um, I'm, a, I'm one of the founding members of OSCAN, the, the group uh, they were introduced in a, a short while ago. And, uh, and uh, we've, um, sorry, uh, <laughs> distracted for a minute by some noise. Um, it's fair to mention that chinma has a baby uh, so these kind of things I think we are all accustomed in the last two years. So I also request uh, everyone, uh, request everyone to go on mute, please, if not speak. Yeah, uh, sorry about the distraction. Uh, it was actually on my side. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of after a few years working with Infosys, I wanted to do something different, take my career in a different path. Uh, that's when I considered an MBA and uh, applied to many business schools, uh, got admits from a few and finally decided to join the Rotterdam School of Management. Um, what I've tried to do here is not uh, present a how-to guide of how to secure an MBA seat. Uh, but try and give you all the information I've gathered from my experience and also from my network, people around me, uh, my classmates from the MBA. Um, my emphasis here is to empower you with two things. One is information. The other is uh, frameworks. Um, so you can take informed decisions when it comes to if you would like to do an MBA, where you would like to do an MBA and what kind of factors uh, you should look at. And finally, also, when it comes to an MBA in the Netherlands, what is it that one should look at? So I want to share my screen, walk you through a PowerPoint deck. Uh, I'll pause in between. So I request all of you to hold on to your questions till when I pause and ask you for questions. 
Um, and if you have any questions in between, feel free to type them in the chat and Devu can walk us through them uh, when, when we have a pause, yeah? So sharing my screen about, and we're gonna talk about NMB in the Netherlands do's and don'ts. So following up on my introduction, uh, I'm currently the head of customer discovery and innovation at Read Exhibitions in Amsterdam. Uh, I have a, over 16 years of experience in digital innovation, product management, consulting, um, an MBA from the Rotterdam School of Management. Uh, my electrical engineering was from KIT in Odisha in India. Um, when I'm not working, I'm engaging with the community as a mentor, helping people with career planning, product management questions and careers, uh, but also how to manage products uh, in scenarios like those. Uh, I'm one of the founding members from a bigger community of members who founded OSCAN, Odia Sociocultural Association in the Netherlands with a view or with an aim to connect Odias living in the Netherlands with uh, Odias back home, but also try and facilitate the conversation around all things Odia globally. Uh, outside of work, I'm also keen about photography, travel. Uh, I play tennis. I try learning new things whenever I can. I recently learned to, le learn to swim. I, I can swim in the deep end now, but also rescue people uh, in the swimming pool. You can connect me on LinkedIn. The framework we are going to follow today is effectively the four steps of how to go about the whole MBA question. So the basics, why should we do an MBA? The research, the kind of, uh, kind of uh, underlying desk research or uh, personal research that you should do before considering an MBA or while applying uh, to, to a business school. Uh, executing your goal of going after an MBA. So what do you do during the MBA? And the outcome. So what after an MBA? So you have a you have an MBA with you. What do you do with it next? Uh, again, the this is not an instructional format. So everything I present here is really a, a summary of all the experience I've gathered, my opinions, and what I've seen in the world around me. Uh, feel free to take this information and use it in whichever way you want. If you disagree with any, any of it, that's great because that's also one of the things you learn to do as an MBA, disagree with a lot of things. So the basics, why an MBA? Um, there are many reasons people have for doing an MBA. The good reasons in my opinion are to develop a holistic understanding of business so that you're better at your job, to grow your current career, to grow in your current career path, to change your career path to something else, to enhance your own brand in the job market with an MBA and the understanding and the knowledge and the network that comes with it. Um, forge lifelong networks. People you do an MBA with uh, tend to remain your friends and in your close professional network for life. So it's a very good starting point if you're trying to enhance your network further. Um, and in case your employer has a program which sponsors an MBA, that's a very good reason to do an MBA because that's some that's a clear sign that your employer wants to invest in your career, in your growth. So that's that's always a good reason. Uh, in the not so good reasons category, uh, I've heard a lot of people have these reasons. At certain points in our life, we also have the same reason. So not a criticism, but if these are the reasons why you want to do an MBA, probably think about it once more. So everybody else is doing it. I should do it. <laughs> not the best reason. It's a finishing school for engineers. So if I'm an engineer, I should do an MBA. It doesn't make sense. Uh, my pa parents want me to do an MBA. Well, not the best idea. Uh, it increases my chances of finding a spouse. An MBA doesn't guarantee a good spouse. So it, it's really you and how you connect with a different person, in my opinion. So uh, it's an MBA is not going to guarantee anything there. Uh, get away from my current life. Well, if you're not happy with your current life, your job, uh, your relationship, whatever, uh, travel somewhere, do something different in life. That's not a very good reason to do an MBA. Uh, I want to travel the world, so I want to do an MBA in a different part of the world. Yes, but and that's not the best reason for an MBA. And the most undecided cockish uh, uh, reason, why not? Uh, well, why not can be applied to many other things. Then there's a third category of reasons in my opinion, which is which I categorize as it depends. 
So uh, there could be good or bad reasons depending on how you uh, how they play out and how you think about it. So become employable in a different part of the world. Yes, a good reason to do an MBA in a different part of the world to try and become employable in that part of the world. But do your research to find out if there's a work visa that you can get after your MBA. If that part of the world welcomes um, foreigners to do an MBA and start working there, if that's possible indeed. Uh, how's the job market? How's the economy in that part of the world? How are the people? How's the work culture? How's the work-life balance? So think about all of those things. And if you're convinced that all of those things work in your favor, then definitely uh, an MBA can make you employable in a different part of the world. Um, developing a specific skill. Um, this is always a tricky one because an MBA is seen as a finishing school that gives you a holistic understanding of business uh, and a specific understanding of one or two fields of business, say, for example, marketing or finance or operations. Um, do you want to do an MBA to become an expert in operations? Probably not the best thing to do because, again, the idea of an MBA is general excellence finishing in, 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 the, in the world of business and an enhanced understanding to become a manager in a certain field of business. Um, if you really want to become an expert in operations, maybe a master's is a better course for it. So think about it, try, try to understand what are your goals from an MBA and then go in that direction. And finally, negotiating your promotion at work a lot of people believe that after an MBA, they go back to their own employer and they get a raise, a promotion and all of that. Um, assess that in advance. Try and see if other people have managed to do it successfully. Don't take it for granted. Um, and if, if you see it, it makes sense and it, it really is how, how the world works, then definitely go for it. I'll pause for a bit and see if there are any questions uh, from anyone or on the chat about the reasons for an MBA. Not yet, Chunma. Uh, Very well put, Doug. Great. I'll I'll keep going then. So now comes the second phase, the research phase. Which schools shall I shall I apply to? So key things to keep in mind: go to the schools' websites, uh, look at the admission requirements. Do they have a requirement for a GMAT score? Do they have a language requirement in terms of that that you need to prove? through a TOEFL score or an IELTS score? Are there any other requirements? For example, minimum experience requirements. I carefully go through all of these because those are often non-negotiable requirements. So if they say you need to have six years of experience before an MBA, you have three. It's extremely unlikely they'll consider your application if, if, if you do not have six years of experience because it's a very competitive field. Um, if you're looking at scholarships, do your research in advance. Uh, try and see what options are, there are out there for scholarships. Sometimes, for example, the Netherlands gives out a number of scholarships through NUFIC, N-U-F-F-I-C. Uh, on the school's website also, you would find a list of scholarships that you could potentially apply to. Uh, keep in mind, not everybody is eligible to apply to all scholarships. For example, there are scholarships for African students, which a student from India cannot apply to. So they're nationality-based scholarships, there are gender-based scholarships. There are achievement-based scholarships. So people coming from a certain sector, like the social sector, there are scholarships that are only open for them. Um, in, my, in my opinion, it's very difficult to get a scholarship as an Indian male who has an IT background unless you have done wonders to change the world. So I wouldn't really count on a scholarship if you have a very standard profile. I don't say that in a bad way. It's just an extremely competitive applicant pool. Um, school research, uh, look at the rankings in the school and also go one level deeper to understand how the rankings were computed. Or if you have a certain field in mind that you want to excel in, in an MBA, try and see how the school is ranked in that particular field. Uh, so a generic ranking of a school could be really high. But for example, if you want to uh, have an MBA with a focus on sustainability and the school's ranking on the sustainability column is quite low, then maybe it's not the best idea to consider that school. Um, do your desk research, look at LinkedIn, look at people, uh, how people's careers changed after they did an MBA at, at your target school. That gives you an idea of how your career could move. 
the rankings also give you a sense of that because one of the biggest uh, inputs that goes into, say, for example, Financial Times rankings is uh, what is your salary change three years after your MBA? So the school is ranked accordingly how uh, according to how the students did after three three years uh, salary wise. Again, not not hinting that salary is the only per parameter to uh, benchmark career progress, but it's one of the ways people look at it. So um, so you could look at that generic indicator, but it's very difficult for you to benchmark yourself against that generic indicator because you might have a very specific profile. So what helps is if you try and look at the student base of the school and try and look them up on LinkedIn. So people with similar profile like yours, similar uh, non-MBA profiles like yours and how their profiles change after the MBA, try and, see, try and analyze that by looking at the profiles on LinkedIn. Then you get a sense of, what your career could potentially lead to. No guarantees, but it gives you a sense. Um, also, many schools encourage you or they would connect you with an alumni who had a similar profile to yours so that you can talk to them, make up your mind about what worked for them, what didn't work for them. So ask the school for these things in your conversations with them. Don't, don't hesitate. Many schools do that. Actually, most schools do that. Um, and that brings me to the, my next point about alumni conversations. Try and look up alumni from the school, either on the school's website or on LinkedIn or any other forum. Try and connect with them. Um, and the more people you speak to, as Sambit mentioned in his presentation earlier, uh, you, you get a variety of views. Uh, oftentimes, it's really down to you how you condense all those views into your decision. So look at or assess what people tell you in a very objective manner. Try and ask people why they did an MBA, their reasons behind it, what they got out of the MBA. Because if, for example, if, if I did an MBA because I just wanted to have fun for 12 months and that's all I had, I would say that I was extremely successful in my MBA. But if you are not going to the MBA with the goal of having fun, then, then my perspective really doesn't matter. So ask these questions, ask, the, ask a few whys to understand what a certain person's perspective is and apply that filter of objectivity to, to use their experience uh, and uh, take your decision. And finally, look at the class demographics, look at the average age of the students, look at the countries they come from, um, look at their years of experience, look at which industries they went to after uh, completing their MBA. That gives you a sense of what happens there and what kind of people are there and whether you would fit in or not. For example, if the average um, age of the class is quite low and you are someone with a, with a lot of experience, you might actually not enjoy the team conversations because they might not live, match your level of experience or maturity or knowledge. So think about all these things, be very critical about it. Uh, because doing an MBA is easy, it's a huge investment, but then you should also get returns on it, right? And as an MBA, you're always thinking about ROI for your business. So why not for yourself? Um, cost of an MBA in the Netherlands, um, the tuition fees range somewhere between 33,000 euros to 40,000 euros, sometimes a bit more uh, for the entire course. And the course durations are somewhere between 11 to 13 months for most university, well, excuse me, universities. The living expenses, as Summit mentioned, are somewhere between 900 to 1600 euros a month, depending on your lifestyle, the city you're living in, how much, how much clubbing is a part of your life, how much you like to eat out and things like that. So it, it's, it's, it really depends on you, but 900 to 1600 is a reasonable range to budget. Um, finally, a few prominent MBA programs in the Netherlands, Rotterdam School of Management, good one, that's where I went. Nine Road School of Business, also a good one. TS Business School, Amsterdam Business School, Maastricht School of Management, all good ones, but do your research. Don't just blindly apply to a school because it, it is listed on my slide or it, it shows up well on the rankings or something like that. Um, few things about the Netherlands. I think we also discussed a few of these in the Q&A session in the previous presentation. Um, the pros of Netherlands as a country, English is spoken widely. It's not the first language. Dutch is the first language, um, but most people can speak English. Many people prefer to speak in Dutch. 
So it's it's not like you're living in the UK, but it's not like you are living in, uh, say, a small village in France either, where everybody only speaks French. Uh, there's a vibrant expat community in major cities, uh, so you would find a lot of other people like you. Uh, the country in general is quite welcoming to foreigners. Um, there is racism like in every part of the world, but not to not to an extent that it would bother you frequently. So it, it's overall, it's, it's a relatively expat or foreigner friendly country. Um, there's a good quality of life and a good quality of work-life balance. So you are encouraged to work only set hours a day. So if your manager pushes you to work beyond certain hours a day, there are checks and balances in place for you to address such situations. Um, in fact, if somebody tries to work longer than they're expected to, their colleagues give them feedback to, to take it easy. Otherwise they're just, uh, messing up the situation for the entire uh, team. Um, the cons of the Netherlands, it's not big negatives, but uh, there are a lot of jobs that require Dutch proficiency. So try and see which career path you want to get into. Do your research to understand if Dutch proficiency is required in those paths. If so, learn Dutch. It's not the easiest language to learn, but a lot of us have learned it. So it's not possible either. Um, the MBA doesn't give you a distinct advantage in the Netherlands like it would in the UK or in the US. Um, the, the US, UK academic systems are quite, they put MBA on a, on a certain uh, ped, on a pedestal. Uh, it is a premium course, not as much in the Netherlands. Uh, in many international companies, they recognize the value that an MBA would bring to the company. So they, they kind of have distinct career paths for MBAs. They compensate you accordingly. Not all companies do. So be careful of, and I'll also address this later in one of the other slides. So be careful where you're applying and also don't assume that by doing an MBA, you, you are a premium candidate, candidate in the Netherlands. It's not always true. And finally, salaries are relatively low in the Netherlands. So for example, if you compare to the UK or the US, they are on the lower side. Uh, taxes are also high. For example, if, if you earn above a certain limit, the highest tax lab, like in India, the highest tax lab is 30% for most, most people. Um, the highest tax lab in the Netherlands is around 53%, so quite high. Again, it's only for the highest slab of your salary, not for your entire salary. So it really depends on how much you make, but taxes are high uh, on an average. And that's what also ensures a good quality of life because there's there are good roads, there's low pollution, et cetera. So you're paying for a better life. I'll pause for a bit and see if there are any questions uh, that have popped up in the meanwhile. Uh, Chinmay, there are questions, of course, uh, but do you think you want to take them now or you finish the slide and you will look into the questions? We could also do it at the end. Yeah, I think uh, probably you can finish uh, the, your presentation then. Yeah, okay, let's do that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, executing, so during the course, uh, what do you do during the MBA? So my, my advice on this or uh, the information I would like to empower with you with on this uh, is uh, focus on the application side of the knowledge gained during the MBA, use the, use the teaching in case studies during the course and in your team assignments. The MBA itself is a very practical course. Uh, it's very practical oriented. Uh, it's not, uh, the, 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 the course format is not very lecture based. You do have lessons, classes, but then immediately you have application in terms of team assignments, case studies, etc. So it's, it's actually fun. It's not always sitting in a classroom and listening to someone speak. Um, I, most people say the biggest, uh, the, the biggest enabler for an MBA's success is the network he or she builds. So network, network, network. I said that three times because it's that important. Uh, go to LinkedIn, find, uh, try, uh, try and make contacts there. Uh, use the university alumni network. 
um, connect with ex-employees from your company, your former company who um, have an MBA or are in, in, in a job path that you would like potentially like to get into. So effectively what you're trying to do here, you, you're trying to set yourself up for success later. So you're trying to see uh, what could be your next company and to get there, you need some people who would help you along the way. So find, find those people by forming a network and find mentors at, as Sambit also mentioned in his, in his presentation earlier, uh, a mentor could be a nice sounding board that gives you feedback on, on your approaches, on your practices, but also someone who helps you along the way with your questions, even basic questions like, am I, am I thinking of it the right way, etc. Uh, prepare a career plan. This is one of the most important things, but also one of the things most people miss or forget to do. So um, my approach to this, what I tell my mentees always is go for three levels, plan for a moonshot. So this is the dream career, dream job, dream country, dream industry, uh, dream company that you want to be in. Often very difficult to achieve. So be, be prepared to fail in trying to achieve the moonshot. Uh, don't be disheartened, it's fine, but be ambitious there. Uh, plan for a second level, the roof shot. Uh, so something which is a stretch goal. It is beyond your current capabilities, but it'll be nice to get there. So that's the roof shot. So your stretch career path, a country that you potentially would like to be in, but you cannot get to uh, easily. Uh, industries that you would like to move to, companies that you would like to work in, etc. Uh, and then also plan a backup. So if your roof shot, your moonshot plans don't work out, what next? So you should have a safe option. So that's your backup. So that's an achievable career path. So a sideways move in your industry or just going back to your previous job uh, at a hard, slightly higher salary, um, going back to your home country, the country you came from, the same industry, same company or, a, or an adjacent company. Uh, something that is not bad, but then something that is achievable and safe. Can um, I yeah. uh, just one more request? I think I have given you the host right. Can you check if uh, anyone else is unmuted? <clears throat> because we see some uh, background noise, little. I have a feeling the background noise could be from my side because I'm okay. currently in India and there's like serious election campaigning <laughs> going on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. We know, fine. we know. We all know how that is. Yeah. yeah. Um, you need to go mute Damodaran. No, Damodaran does not have a audio. So. Okay. Finally, uh, before your MBA course comes to an end, start applying for jobs already. Don't wait for the program to end and then apply. The good thing about applying is you you get a hang of it. You get a habit of it, and. Um, and that also makes you more successful when you finally start applying seriously to jobs that you would like. So don't expect those early applications to give you, uh, I mean, don't expect to have high conversion on those early applications, uh, but there's no harm in applying. Uh, something might turn up. There might, be an, uh, there might be a position where someone's looking to hire a few months down the line and they might see you as a good candidate for that. So don't hesitate to start applying already. And finally, uh, my biggest advice, and the strongest one, don't forget to have fun. Uh, you are in a new country, uh, have fun. Um, keep pursuing your hobbies. Don't let the MBA dominate your life. It does take a lot of time from your life, but don't let it dominate your life 100%. Your hobbies also make an interesting profile for you. Uh, and when a recruiter is looking from hun through hundreds of CVs, an interesting profile always stands out. So you have an advantage. So invest in yourself. Uh, if you have a hobby, pursue it. If you don't have a hobby, try try finding one and uh, investing in it. Um, socializing in a foreign country is expensive, uh, but it's good because you're meeting people, you're forming networks. So, so budget for it. Don't be, go crazy on socializing, but have a budget, try and monitor it and use your socializing budget to your advantage. Try and make friends, people who would refer you to a job later. So try, and, try and look out for those people. And finally, my advice to anyone moving to a new country, you are brand ambassadors for your country. So always think of that 
the impression you leave behind in that country and no means no. And I think you're smart enough to understand what that means. Um, my last slide before we go to questions. So you've gone through your MBA course, you've finished it, what next? How do you find a job and how do you manage your career? Um, keep applying to as many jobs, follow the three, three, three prong plan, the moonshot, the roof shot and your uh, safety plan. Um, try to join a company that supports your, supports your post MBA career goals. Uh, check the different career paths of MBA profiles on LinkedIn for people of those companies, MBAs from that company. Uh, talk to current employees, try and gather a real picture of what the company is, how good or bad it is for a career, but also for an MBA career. Um, usually international companies manage MBA careers better than a local Dutch company who potentially wouldn't even understand what an MBA is in many cases. And also my previous advice of trying to network, network, network during the MBA applies for the, your post MBA situation also and all throughout your life. So network, network, and network. Uh, the salary negotiation part, this is where um, people who are moving to a new country tend to be less aggressive or less assertive on. Um, try and analyze um, what your ideal salary should be if you were someone from that country that you, you are applying uh, for jobs in. And uh, don't think of your current salary in India, because if you apply the conversions and everything and the purchasing power parity difference, it's it's going to turn out to be pretty low. So it's, it's, it's not a good base to start a salary negotiation. So benchmark your salary expectations with people with similar profiles in the country and, or in the target company. It's very difficult to get accurate salary information. You can use Glassdoor, you can use Payscale sites like that to get an approximate idea of what someone with your level of experience makes in a certain company or in a certain industry, use that uh, in to kind of benchmark your salary expectations. Uh, be prepared for a slight correction. So a slightly lower than your benchmark salary if the company is sponsoring your work permit and relocation, because also they're investing in that, right? And they're taking a big risk moving someone from a different country to this country, or even like a, a, em, employing a foreign national. So uh, factor that if, if they make you an offer, a final salary offer, which is lower than, slightly lower, not massively lower, but if it's just slightly lower than the benchmark you had in mind, it's fine if they're doing a lot for you. So keep that in mind. Um, at work, especially in the Netherlands, um, be clear in your communication. Um, if for candidates who are from India, they, tend to hesitate to communicate clearly. I've seen that with uh, even me in so many cases, but with a lot of my peers, um, we tend to think it through and we sometimes use nonverbal communication to try and express ourselves, which is not very effective if you're in the Netherlands. You have to speak it, you have to say it out loud. You have to be assertive, but at the same time, you need to be polite uh, because the Dutch culture is direct, but it is also polite. Um, update your career plan. So you had a career plan during the MBA. Now you have a job. Update your career plan to be make it more realistic and more adapted to where you are and how do you where do you want to go from there. Um, regarding organizations in the Netherlands, you can apply to opportunities are endless. There are a lot of international companies in the Netherlands. Um, but do very good research to try and see what kind of job openings there are in your field of interest or pertaining to your background. One thing to keep in mind, going back to my previous point of an MBA not being a massive game changer in the Netherlands, um, your past experience plays a huge role when you're trying to find a job after your MBA. So it'd be quite difficult for you to change your career path entirely um, just on the basis of your MBA. I'm not saying, well, one advice we got from our uh, from the career placement cell of my school, my business school was you cannot change. It's, it's extremely difficult to change all three, your country, your industry, and your career level or your salary level. Um, so you should aim to change one or two of them at a time after your MBA. Um, so that's that's advice I would also pass on to you. It's extremely difficult to change your career, country, 
and industry at the same time. Having said that, I've done all three at the same time. So you can do it also, but be realistic when it comes to uh, what you expect out of your post MBA career or journey. Uh, that's all I had to share with you today. Um, I'm ready for your questions now. Thank you. Thank you, Chinmay. I have to, yeah. Maybe we can start from the beginning, from the top. Just do you also have compared? Okay, so uh, one question is do you also have a comparative, let's say, view? of doing MBA in Netherlands compared to other countries in Europe? What, what do you have to say about it? Um, so I'll, I'll look at it from my perspective, right? So I was applying to schools in France, in the Netherlands, in, um, in the United Kingdom. Um, I, I, I had, um, I made good progress in all three cases. I picked the Netherlands because the Netherlands, I wanted it, my, my own aspirations were I wanted to study in mainland Europe, not in the United Kingdom. I had United Kingdom as my safe safety plan. Uh, and um, when it came to France, between France and the Netherlands, the Netherlands is a more international country. You, you open yourself to a bigger job market as an English speaker in the Netherlands compared to France. Having said that, France has a few business schools which are much higher ranked than those in the Netherlands, like INSEAD, um, which, which is a top 10 school. So if you have an MBA from a top 10 school, a lot of those things don't matter anymore, language, et cetera, because it gives you a lot of international mobility. Um, so it's, it's really, I mean, it's up to you what you pick. I see that, uh, yes, yeah, so Damodaran, you have raised hand. Let's just try to, I'm just trying to go through the, uh, chat first, of course, uh, I will ask you to ask your question. Uh, moving ahead, uh, Chinmay, the question about uh, MBA it's expense for someone who is coming from India versus someone from Netherlands itself. Do you, are there any, because um, somebody talked about uh, maybe there is a price difference or expense difference uh, for locals versus who is coming from other places. Do you see something like that in MBA? Public institutions in the Netherlands, uh, they offer a discounted tuition fees to Dutch nationals. Um, not all business schools are public institutions. So um, the, the business school often falls into, uh, um, in so many ways, a luxury education category. So um, yeah, I mean, in some cases you might have a lower fees for Dutch nationals, people with a Dutch passport. Um, but for most people, they have to pay the entire tuition fees. Thank you. You do get uh, like a, in your first year after you start earning, I think you can, uh, you get a tax break because of your investment uh, in your MBA fees. I, I think for any masters, not just an MBA for that matter. Yeah. Uh, moving ahead, Subranshu is asking, should we look at doing executive MBA with the working profile like MBA as supply chain domain? So probably he's asking supply chain domain specific MBA. Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of break this uh, question down to two questions and take them in parts. So executive MBA versus full-time MBA. So an executive MBA tends to be longer. Uh, for example, in the Netherlands, most exec MBAs are two years long. You do it over the weekends because you're also working. And MBA is an extremely intensive course. Um, and if you are in a job where you have to work hard, it becomes quite difficult for you to work during the week and also work during the weekends for your MBA. Many people can do it. Some people can't. So it's really up to you if, if that works for you. Um, also, the thing about the exec MBA is it's more expensive than a full-time MBA. Uh, that's also because in most cases, the company sponsor candidates for an executive MBA. So the company kind of pays the fees for an executive MBA. The advantage, maybe the only advantage in my opinion that the exec MBA has over a full-time MBA is the network that you get from your class in the executive MBA tends to be a higher quality network because these are professionals mostly working in and around the Netherlands, 
because if you're outside of the Netherlands or too far outside of the Netherlands, it's impossible for you to come down every weekend to study in the Netherlands. So by that, uh, by that logic, you would usually have people from the Benelux region uh, as your classmates. So you form a stronger network of people who are working in the Benelux region. So Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, that region. So through them, you can probably change jobs after the MBA. It gives you some sort of an advantage, not a huge one, I would say. Uh, and executive MBA in supply chain, unfortunately, I don't know much about that field. Uh, so it'd be unfair for me to comment. But I think, I mean, in general, an MBA with a specialized focus makes you a better manager in that area. If you, for example, want to become a hardcore analyst in supply chain um, or an individual performer in supply chain, I would rather say go to a master's. Exactly. So it depends on your aspirations. Yeah. If, if someone has already a specific sector in mind, so it's best to look at MBA or other options, like you said, right? I just wanted to add one point uh, about you. You talked about, let's say, corporate sponsoring for MBAs. I, I know that uh, T, at least TCS used to have uh, a tie up with Nine Road. Uh, so if you are a TCS employee, you can uh, you know, do a, you can have an IELTS score and uh, uh, you can apply for uh, uh, that program. I'm not sure if still if TCS has still that relationship, but it used to have for many years. Yeah, moving ahead, uh, there is a question about let's say MBA here versus MBA in India. Uh, what is the output in terms of opportunity? But if I can add just one point, the experience itself. Like I have not done MBA, but I know I have a lot of friends who have done MBA in whether IAMs or Xavier's and other institute. Uh, it's very verbose. I know that some at some point people say that they need to read through 200 plus pages almost every day to prepare for that day in classes. Uh, what is your understanding of you know, that kind of experience during MBA? Plus, if you can touch upon opportunity post MBA. Well, um, maybe I'll start with why I decided not to pursue an MBA in India. Um, nothing against uh, B schools in India. For me, um, I, I was in a job where I mostly worked with clients in India. For me, I, ne I needed an international exposure. I, I, I thought that was necessary for my professional growth. So that was one reason I wanted to do an MBA abroad. Um, I personally thought the GMAT was a much better examination compared to the CAT examination. But ridiculous in my opinion, the, the CAT, the way you, you have to prepare for it. Um, it also kind of intense incentivizes you to not do well at your job and spend all your time preparing for the uh, for for cat. Uh, again, my 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 personal opinion. Uh, the GMAT is a much uh, well rounded format. Um, so for me, it worked as a format. Um, and uh, the other thing that I saw with a lot of business schools is the experience level of people. Or the, the number of years of experience of people in the class was relatively low in the full-time course. So for me, um, I also wanted to learn from my classmates and I, I always put experience as a good proxy for how much I can gain from them. So for me, these were the three reasons. In terms of the course format, um, I, I would really have to do an MBA in both countries to know what the difference is. Uh, but at least in my, uh, in a lot of, uh, business schools abroad it then or maybe one thing to check at when uh, look at when you are applying for uh, or you're, you're evaluating a school is to try and see if they have a case-based system of uh, or case-based uh, form of education or is it a lecture oriented form of education I prefer the case-based because effectively what you're doing is you're looking at real life examples of how companies solved a certain problem which is very different from a textual or fundamental view on how business is done because business never form, never follows a script. Uh, it's very uncertain. It depends on so many. It depends on economic cycles. It depends on the competition. It depends on disruption, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it always helps to learn from 
the successes or mistakes from other companies. And that's what you do in a case-based practice. Also in your team assignments, you do a lot of scenario analysis. So you kind of broken down into various teams. One team looks at scenario A. So for example, an earth, there's an earthquake, how does a company deal with it? This is an extreme example. And there's a tsunami, how does a company deal with it, et cetera. So you're looking at different scenari scenarios. And once you get into that mode, you're also, when you're trying to take a decision in your job, you're trying to look at all potential scenarios. And I believe, the end decision tends to be more founded on a balanced way of looking at things than just saying, let's do this or do that. Yeah. Uh, going forward uh, about the fee, MBA fee, uh, would you touch upon, let's say, what is the usual duration of a full-time MBA and a fee we have mentioned that up to 33K or 40K, uh, what is your understanding? So, Worldwide varies. Uh, most US MBAs, for example, are two years long uh, and the fees are quite high. Um, which you, you can easily look up and try, try and see what the fee is for any school. Uh, I'll, I'll focus on the Netherlands because that's where uh, I, I know the most about things. The fee, as I mentioned, is somewhere between um, 30K to 40K, um, 33K to 40K a year. Most courses are a year long. So they say 12 months, some of them 11 months, some of them 13 months, just kind of like around a year. And you can budget um, about 1000 a month for living expenses. And that's all you would spend. So when we say tuition fees, it includes everything. It includes, uh, um, well, it, it includes everything you experience during the MBA in the campus. The only thing, potentially you would invest more on is maybe a study trip or something, but that's kind of covered when I say living expenses of a thousand a month, it, it, it is for, covered by that uh, budget. Yeah. Uh, Subransu is asking, taking an example of a Rotterdam school, how you find out the list of programs. I think you can of course find the list of programs it offers in the website. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. website is a really good starting point for all of these. Uh, if you have further questions or detailed questions about any of them, you can always send an email to the school. Uh, they would connect you with an admin, uh, administrate, excuse me, admissions rep who would maybe engage with you and help you with further questions you have. Yeah. So very interesting question about so doing an MBA and you try for job here versus doing an MBA here and then try to look for jobs in India. What is what is your uh, what's best uh, from from you know someone who is coming to do MBA here? Are there? Sorry, I didn't quite understand what what's so here and there. Let's say if a candidate is coming here doing an MBA and exploring job markets here, uh, mm -hmm. versus someone doing MBA here and trying to maximize the advantage back home. You know, someone with a foreign MBA or exploring yeah. much better opportunity back in India? That's a good question um, and a really tough one to answer. So I've had classmates who've done both. Uh, I personally stayed back in the Netherlands uh, and looked for a job there. I, I joined a startup immediately after my MBA and then joined a much bigger company. Um, so uh, th there is a booming job market, but as a foreigner, as someone who hasn't, demonstrated work experience in the Netherlands, um, the, 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 the scales are tilted, uh, not in your favor. So uh, you have to put in, um, you have to put in extra effort, you have to have a bit of luck, uh, that applies for anything in life for you actually. Um, about using your MBA abroad in, back in India, it really depends on the situation. Uh, some companies see that um, in a positive light, some companies would just look at the ranking of the school and make up their minds based on that. Some people, some companies have a campus placement program with certain Indian business schools in India. So companies have that. So they, they would, they would not deviate from it. They would only hire from those companies. So if you're, if you're doing an MBA abroad and coming back, uh, think about it well enough i mean have your safety net in place before you do that usually the way most people look at it is they go to the netherlands or go abroad to their mba 
work two or three years in that country, prove themselves there, and then move back to India because then they also have saved enough money to pay off their student loans um, yeah. because it's an expensive course. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, Damodaran is asking, uh, he's asking about exams. I think you mentioned that GMAT is uh, yeah, the, the, the primary exam. Uh, but uh, would you like to touch upon uh, on scholarships? You said that it's very rare and difficult, but... Well, it's rare and difficult if you're an Indian IT male. So uh, if you have a non-standard non profile, um, you, there, there could be scholarships that you, you would be eligible to, or that you could easily get. Uh, so for example, if you've worked in non-specific sectors like uh, uh, social, in the social sector, if you work for nonprofits, for example, you might actually have a really good chance of getting a scholarship. There are certain scholarships meant uh, to encourage more women to do MBAs. So uh, that could work in your favor if you're a woman. Um, it could also be like, for example, an IT excellence scholarship, and in which case your IT profile would work in your advantage. Uh, again, what I'm trying to say is not a bad thing to have an IT background. A lot of smart people go for IT, and that's why there's just so much competition in that field. You have to beat out the competition, and that's why it's so difficult to find a seat with that profile because you're competing against people. You have to have a really high GMAT score, and it's also that difficult to get a scholarship because there are not as many people, uh, not any, uh, excuse me, not as many scholarships for people with an IT background. Because the whole point behind a scholarship is to draw in people from some specific backgrounds. And if you have a flood of people from a certain background, if you have the luxury of cherry picking people from a certain background, you do not need to give out a scholarship. Right, yes. Uh, another question is, what are the best MBA streams to look at? I think you have throughout your presentation, you talked about uh, you know, from people perspective, they need to be clear what they want to do, but would you write, like to enlist or take up something like finance, operations, marketing, um, what is your it, take? It, it's, it really depends on you. It, it's really, which field do you want to gain the most focused insight on? So that should be your specialization. Um, having said that, it's not the, not the most difficult decision for you. So let's take my example. At a certain point, I wanted to go back to the world of banking. So I decided to specialize in finance in my MBA. And since then, I've been working in product management, closer to marketing, closer to innovation, very far away from finance. So nothing to do with finance. So if you, have, if you specialize in a certain stream that doesn't box you into that particular stream, you have the power of a generic MBA behind you, which has empowered you with the knowledge of business the tools, uh, the frameworks to take decisions. So you should be fine. Thank you. Uh, I see that Sambit, you have questions. Sambit, go ahead. Uh, no, actually, I don't have any question. I just have a small point to add, which might be useful for people who are looking to do MBA. So uh, recently, I heard from someone that uh, you have something like a combined MBA, like SPJIMR offers a global management program where you can do half in SPJIMR and then half in Nine Road Business School. And on that, I also made a very short video interview because on MBA, I still don't have that much content. So your presentation was very helpful. So you can have a look in on that. Like if you want to do a MBA, whatever I've heard, it's like funded, fully funded. So you get some months in SPJIMR and then as part of the global management program, you come to Nine Road in Amsterdam and then you continue your MBA. So that is also another option. Yeah, SPJIMR is SPJ in from India, right? That's the yeah. college. Yeah. Thank you, Sambit. Are there any questions uh, from the audience for Chinmay? I think your presentation was uh, quite elaborative and informative, Chinmay. So I think many of the questions have been answered. I would encourage people to connect with Chinmay in LinkedIn. Chinmay Panigra, you can search and find him there. Sambit also, uh, Sambit Praharaj, you can search and find them, connect with them in different social media platforms. 
Sambit is quite active and has a, a strong YouTube uh, uh, you know, list of videos, strong subscriber base. So do connect and get, uh, you, know, uh, you can ask specific questions to them. Yes, we will. Uh, yeah. Thanks, that's, thanks, everyone. Wish you all thank the best. You, thank you, Chinmay.